Thank you. Thank you, everyone, for uh, having me here today. I will be talking a little bit about basics of cleaning and sanitizing. This is a webinar for fresh produce growers. Uh, I will be brief because I could talk here for over a week about cleaning and sanitizing programs for a farm, for a packing house. Uh, so let's start with why, why it is important, because cross-contamination is a serious concern for produce growers because oftentimes what are initially small amounts of contamination can spread to equipment, water, and produce, and then can result in a widespread contamination events and outbreaks of foodborne disease. Uh, so growers can reduce their risks both in the field and after harvesting by limiting the opportunity for pathogens spread via cross contamination. And by doing that, growers uh, following good agricultural practices can increasingly improve their produce quality and safety and protect their own businesses. Uh, so producers can use the standards cleaning and sanitizing practices to reduce source of microbial contamination through cross contamination on their produce. Uh, so cleaning and sanitizing programs, you have to think about the, when you are in a packing house or uh, even in your field, we have those, what we call four zones of contact, four zones. So the zone one, is the food contact surfaces. So this is where the produce uh, contact directly. Uh, it is more the more critical one. So we can say there are harvest beans, there are roller, brushes, containers, workers' hands, and harvesting tools, and everything that directly contact produce. So, and then cleaning and sanitizing is extremely important uh, on this zone one. Zone two and three are adjacent to food contact surfaces. They are also important to pay attention. Uh, but then zone four, it's outside the packing house, let's say. But it's also important to maintain and cleaning and sanitizing program through all these uh, four zones. So you, you're limiting, you're reducing cross-contamination and contamination of produce. So basically, uh, cleaning and sanitizing program are followed by four to five steps. Uh, basically, it's four steps. Uh, so first of all, we are going for uh, physical removal of residues. Those uh, when we we are washing produce, whether it's, it carries a lot of soil or a lot of uh, uh, residues. They can be cleaned out with a brush, removed manually with a brush, or you can just do a water rinse to remove the excess. Uh, and again, this water needs to be potable, safe to drink. It needs to be following the safe standards. Um, and after that, then you apply the cleaning solution, what we call detergents. Uh, then it's appropriated cleaning agents that will clean the soils, the residues that you have in there. And you're going to brush it or you're going to use uh, any tools to remove the access using the detergents. Uh, you can use a acid rings if you have a lot of mineral buildup, especially if you have uh, heavy, um, uh, heavy water on your facility. But mostly after this applying detergent, you do a final rinse with clean water that could be warm or cold water to remove all the excess of cleaner and then you apply the sanitizer. Uh, it, sanitizers can be, most of sanitizers, you don't need to rinse it out. You just apply the sanitizer and let it dry. And, and then cleaning and sanitizing programs. I always like to say that is in, unique to your facility, your practices, and the commodities that you're washing. Uh, for example, Root vegetables often require an initial rinse, a scrubbing followed by one or two additional rinses to remove the soil residues. Uh, while fruits and vegetables that grow all above the ground might be brushed and wiped uh, with soil or other any kind of residues. So we can see the difference here 
uh, based on your commodity and based on your practices. Uh, some other commodities uh, that are uh, more delicate and more perishable products like strawberries, blueberries, the growers don't normally wash them with water. There's so all the processing, the sorting and the packing is in a dry uh, facility, which is your, every time you're adding water to your processing, you're adding another point of contamination. Even though you're adding sanitizer to the water, even though it is still adding another source of contamination. So, but again, some produce cannot be dry washed or dry processed. They need to be washed with water, uh, but then some other they don't need. So in this case, when you're washing small, when you're processing small fruits, uh, you don't need to use, it is a dry facility. So you don't use water. So when you're cleaning and sanitizing your equipment, uh, it is. It tends to be all dry cleaning, uh, unless you have equipment that it can be disassembled and then it can move to other areas that you can wash and clean and dry. Uh, that is fine. But in the, the physical, the cleaning place equipments, uh, they are normally washed dry, so you don't add more contamination, more uh, opportunities to grow bacteria on those areas. And you're, and you're choosing cleaning and sanitizers. Uh, let's talk about cleaning. Uh, the cleaners normally for produce washing, uh, you're gonna use alkaline detergents that are more likely to wash carbohydrates, which, you, which is the source that we are bringing from the field and then fruits and vegetables. And for any routine environmental cleaning, we are talking about uh, equipment, we are talking about floors, we are talking about tools, and we're talking about beans. Uh, keep in mind that you're always using low water pressure because let's say if you're washing your floor and you have high pressure, it can splash to your uh, everywhere and even to your uh, packing line equipment. And it can also contaminate if you have something in the floor, which is normally the dirtier players. Uh, when you're choosing the sanitizer, keep in mind that it needs to be EPA registered sanitizers. The most used ones are chlorine and peroxacetic acid based sanitizers, uh, and they need to be approved for food contact surfaces or produ produce washing when you are adding to the wa wa wash water. And be careful when you're using lubricants too. The lubricants also need to be food grade so you don't have a chemical uh, hazard introduced to your produce. So again, when you're talking about sanitizers, uh, we are looking for the EPA registration number. So when you're looking at the label of your sanitizer, you look for this EPA registration number that is on the label of your sanitizer. But most of those sanitizers, they don't come with this nice looking food and vegetable washing. They normally come this way. So they come with the EPA, EPA registration number and that's all. And you have to go to the EPA website and look for this number and look for the whole label, all this, the whole description of the product and, and see if it is intended for washing fruits and vegetables or food contact surfaces. There are some that are very similar that are not intended for washing fruit and vegetables, such as Clorox that has a scented added to it. Uh, and then if you look at the label, it doesn't even have an EPA registration number. But again, some of those, they might have it, but they might not intended for washing fruit and vegetables. So every time you have to go to the EPA registration number, the, the website, look for pesticide product and label system. And you're going to type this number in and you're going to open up a series of files. You're going to click on the, the, the list updated one you're going to open up a uh, PDF file with more than five pages. You're just going to search for fruit and vegetable washing or food contact surfaces. And then it will tell you how to prepare and what concentration you should be using as well. So every time you're getting a new, pest, a new uh, sanitizer, look at the label and look at the registration number and how to prepare and how to use it. And also in the current uh, vegetable, uh, Southeast Vegetable Handbook, 
We have a list of sanitizers that can be used in wash water, dump tank, or vegetable wash water. And they're, they're specified by the use, whether it's for using the wash dump tank or equipment, uh, some concentration range, some use. But again, this is just uh, to give you an idea and an overview of what sanitizers can be used. But again, every time you get a new one, go to the website and look at the label and read the label uh, for the product. Some, some suppliers can, can provide a, a, a manual that you can read it through and then it has the specifications for it. But sometimes, oftentimes you have to go online and look for the, for the fact sheet and, and then the description of it. So, and then important things to keep in mind about cleaning and sanitizing programs on your facilities is that you need to set up a cleaning and sanitizing schedule uh, that can be determined by based on your volume of product, time interval, uh, or between individual lots of products. Uh, so it is, it is your cleaning schedule. So you have to set it up so, and then it has to be effective. Uh, it needs to make sense to the practices that are part of a normal operation. So if you decided it's going to be doing uh, every lot, uh, every end of lot that you're cleaning, your basic cleaning on your, on your, on your um, line, that in, then you, you set it up. Or if you're going to do at the end of the day, uh, or and then you are doing a floor cleaning every five, four days, then it's on your schedule. So you need to follow that. And you also have to have easy to clean equipment on your facility. So if you can see this, uh, this picture here shows a table that is definitely not easy to clean. And then you pathogen as microorganisms can hide with these crevices. So you have to be careful when you, with your, the type of equipment that you have, Sometimes retro, retrofitting might not work. You need to get a new equipment. Uh, it doesn't mean that you have an old equipment. It cannot be cleaned or sanitized. So just keep that in mind. Uh, segregate cleaning tools. Uh, you can use color-coded tools. It's very useful. So tools that are um, equipment that you use to clean the bathrooms and you put in one color or you segregate them or brushes that you use on a packing line uh, or a food contact surface that are different than you use to clean the floor or other adjacent areas. Uh, keep pests and animals away from your processing area. So they all oftentimes bring pathogens. So you just want to make sure that you have a pest uh, pest control system. And for everything you're doing on your packing house or in a processing or harvesting, you need to have detailed standard operating procedures uh, and document everything you're doing based on your, on your uh, cleaning and, and uh, on your practices. And lastly, workers training is extremely important. They need to understand why cleaning and sanitizing is important and how to properly perform those, uh, those practices. So that's why this is one of the most important concepts and, 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 and key points. Workers training, they need to know what to do and properly how to do it. So to wrap up, I'm just going to uh, promote one of our um, programs that it's uh, recently launched. It's called the Ag Water Safety Program. Uh, it is, is a program that will provide educational support to growers and navigate through the new requirements related to the water, ag water proposed rule for the produce safety rule. And you're also offering microbial water testing for you for free. So if you're interested in participating, you can uh, access this link here and fill it up a pre-screening survey, or you can use the QR code here and open the, the survey link. Or if you have any questions, you can reach out to me and then uh, I'll, be, I'll be happy to give more information about this program. And questions, I'm open to question and thank you all for being here today.